this is my dozer. It's a case. 310 G 1969 tractor runs great not any problem with the engine but the uh, transmission was broken when I got it and I had to pull the whole transmission final drives and everything out of this tractor and fix it a roller bearing dropped into the pinion shaft and ring gear inside and destroyed it broke the shaft here the drive shaft coming out to the pinion shaft managed to find all the parts reverse idler reverse idler gear everything i needed for it put brand new final drive shafts in it new sprockets on it i managed to find those got this thing running great but it's a work in progress so I've always been doing things to it and the project that I'm working on right now are these idlers this side is done I tried to find these brackets here they're not available so I had two choices first choice I could take it to a machine shop and have this shaft replaced under this nut through here have them make one and then have them mill these out the brackets on both sides and fit it perfect like it was or I could do it myself and try to do it cheaper so what I started to do was a lot of different things I thought about different processes and I came up with one that I think is gonna work really well you can see this shaft is egg-shaped this bracket here where the shaft goes through it is egg-shaped at some point in this tractors life the bearings which are fine now must have seized and turned those shafts inside this bracket and once it started to wear it started to wear really fast so I've come up with a plan which I've put into play and this side here is done as you can see there's no movement there's nothing this is totally tight I welded new wear bars in here which I have not done on this side yet I made new wear bars for under here which are on the other bracket right here this takes a quarter inch plate and uh, I've got this bracket this is the second side and I've got this one worked up and the way I decided to do it was to weld up inside here with my MIG and I managed to find these online this is a flap wheel it's a one inch flap wheel and I have a high speed die grinder I run it on and I can flap wheel those out and get them back to circular as I did here this side's done I have to do the other bracket now and what I did was I bolted these brackets together and I leveled them and the bottom of the bracket I'm not touching and I used a nice straight pipe to level that out and then I welded up and around the tops and welded the eggs shut I used the pipe because I wanted to make sure that these idlers would set level and true to the track frame this one I have checked level on into the track frame and it looks awesome so that one's going to work 
This idler is kind of worn, so I'm going to beef it in here. I've got some plans for that that I'll video. And this side here is thinner than this side. So this is going to need to be beefed up along here on the outside. So we got one more bracket to do and we got this idler to beef. This idler is fine. It's good looking. It's thick. It looks like this one was replaced. At least that's what I think. And I think this idler is original from 1969. Now there was another problem I had with this. These brake arms flopped all over the place. And I took out the bushings that you can see down here where my finger is. There's a bushing that goes through that shaft. And I took those bushings out and I welded them up and I reground them. And now there's hardly any slop in my brakes. They work awesome. Like I say, this tractor is a work in progress. At some point, I'm going to make this blade a six-way blade. Right now, it's four-way. It's a pretty handy little blade, though. But when I make it six-way, it will be uh, a lot more useful to me. So, I guess it's time to get this last bracket done and get it ready to go. So uh, let's get started. <laughs> Basically, it's a continuation of that all the way around. Those flap wheels are pretty amazing. Now, if this was a bearing, I wouldn't even try it if it was a bearing seat because they have to be almost exact. But this shaft does not turn in here. These brackets only hold the shaft. So, basically, if I can get that worked up into a nice situation, where it's nice and tight like the other one is and this other side is that should be fine so uh, we'll continue the process
tail because uh, if you get any points or anything like that, it'll rip these flap wheels right up.
Just fits on. <clears throat> At least it doesn't have to run a bearing. But it goes on and it doesn't move. And this shaft doesn't turn. The idler turns inside it. So I'm going to call that good. I can't get it to do anything. So I think we're in. All right, I'm cutting out the wear bars for this idler project. Using the plasma cutter.
I've used some wear bar material here. It's going under here because, as you can see, these are worn. So I need to put something under here as well as on here and here. You can see this is worn. Same on that one. So uh, I'm using 3 16ths here. And then we'll have a quarter inch plate that will go in here. And then wear bars of 1 8 inch that will go here. So that's what we're working on today. This is all set up here. What I'm doing here, this plate is simulating the track frame where this is going to set on. So I've got this all set so it's all flat and true. And uh, now it's time to make it on. I have everything cleaned up and ready to go. Okay, same situation. This is simulating the track frame. I have it bolted down completely flat to it. Got these cleaned up. look good as you can see I mean I'm not the best welder in the world but uh, they aren't coming off now I have to weld these up because what's going to happen is we are going to put a wear bar in here there's a plate that goes over this bolts to here and it captures this plate in here but the problem is these ends are worn, so I'm going to weld these up and grind them off just below the plate, which is what I did on that side, and uh, that should be fine. See here that uh, you got those welded up. I'm going to go get the other bracket and we're going to weld them up too and then we'll grind these off flat so they just work. Just right. I'm going to weld up the other bracket the same way. Now it's time to, uh, we got these ground off, 
Now I gotta grind the tops to make them fit in the slots. So that's next. Got everything ready here. As you can see, these nuts are on. Nothing's tight yet. This cover goes on. There's shims behind here on all four to set this plate at the right width. Both sides are the same. There's a set of uh, bolts back here to bolt the Brackets together in the rear and inside that There's a unit for the uh, the track adjuster here And that goes inside here, so these have to all be tightened now. I'm going to tighten these big nuts first
In case anybody thinks I'm kidding, it says right there, position idler on track frame, channels with grease fitting to the outside. Slide it or drive it back with a sledgehammer. <laughs> there you go, right in the manual. As you can see, looking pretty good. here this idler the newer one already has those so I thought as long as I had it apart in here <clears throat> I would get this one done the same way here than down here because the idler has that V shape kind of so let's see how this is. it's right down in there all the way to the bottom and I'll weld that in after I clean it up on the side here and that'll help beef that idler big time
great as Meg Man's, but we're getting it. You can see that the outside, they're about even. And you can see my beefs here. This idler should last a long time, you hope. All right. We'll grind a little bit on that, and then we'll put the tracks on it. As you can see, this side is on and it's pinned. I ran out of battery and I didn't run out of time. So uh, while the GoPro was charging, I got this side done. Now we're working on this side. I've got it almost there. So uh, I have to get this link here up onto this right here so once that's done this will come down and we'll pin it up <clears throat> I'll have to get a big C clamp to do it so. Now I've got this right where I want it to be. This needs to drop into this slot and I've got it locked down on the sprocket back there and I put this bottle jack in to hold it down so I can release tension here from the skid steer. Now, the track is up on. The last video stopped on me, so I'm here. This is the master pin here. And it's almost in, but not quite. So now, we're gonna drive that puppy on in. Up in here on this, I put never seize on these pins. I've always done that. That way, when I get ready to depin the tracks, they will actually come out. I know a lot of people probably will say that's the wrong thing to do but I've never had any of these pins drift on any of these so
I think that's it. I think she's in. She most definitely is in. I'm gonna fire this thing up and back it out and we'll adjust the tracks. The track is flat and happy on this side. Completely level. And if we come over here and we look at this side, it's also flat and happy. This side actually cantered to the right a little bit and dropped. And now with the idler fixed and right, it's setting really nice and level and flat. So these tracks should be, uh, when they're tight and right, they shouldn't come off. They shouldn't try to wander. They should be awesome. <laughs> that I use, that I've used for years, right up in here, you can see, right there, 
right in here. There's a lot of thread and stuff around. I take an old sock and I wrap it around those threads and I zip tie it. And that way I oil the, the crap out of it. And when it gets oiled, then the dirt can fall on it and it doesn't get on your threads. So that's what we'll do next. I was telling you that uh, I soak these with oil and then I put socks on them. Keeps all the dirt out of my threads. Keeps everything just right. So this is the trick. This tractor has worked awesome. No problem at all. Tracks are staying on great. Haven't had any issues with it. It just does what I ask it to do. You can see the tracks are staying just about the right. Tension now. Everything looks great. That was a clip from an upcoming video, which I used that tractor in extensively. I was making and grading and, and ditch lining the camp location. Also, I used that tractor on the making a new driveway video. And it performed stellar all the way through, as, as I said in that little clip. The track line is staying straight now. The idlers aren't turning. The tracks aren't trying to come off. So I consider that process that I used a success. That tractor's fixed. You'll see it more in upcoming videos. Thanks for watching.